turned up to this one, Worcester Bosch, that ESI customers said the overflow was leaking outside. It was actually the PRV that was dripping outside and you can see the pressure was quite high. And it's just a continual drip. So I'm gonna whip out the Breakdown Bible Wet Edition. I'm gonna to go to the fault finding flow charts for excess pressure combi boiler. So here's the boiler displaying excess pressure. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna isolate the flow and the return underneath. Then I'm gonna drain the boiler and see if the pressure gauge is still showing excess pressure. As you can see, the pressure's dropping, so we know it's not the gauge giving a faulty reading. So now we're gonna check the expansion vessel hose is clear, spray a bit of WD-40, pull the pin out using some grips, and then pop the hose out. I'm gonna use my long-handled screwdriver, and it fits up in between the jig, and then you can get it the full length of the hose to make sure it's not blocked. And that goes up pretty easily, so we know that's not blocked. So we're gonna put the hose back together, Recharge the expansion vessel using my Regan electric pump. I pump the vessel up to one bar to allow for a bit of pressure loss when I take the gauge off. It's already at 0.9, but we'll leave it for five minutes anyway. After five minutes, it's still at one bar, so that's good. Next, I'm going to remove the gauge and spray LDF on the Schrader valve. So the expansion vessel and the hose is all good. I didn't even get a chance to open flow and return and it was still rising. So I'm going to disconnect the filling loop. In an ideal world, you do that first, but it's a fail safe flow chart. It's a little in depth, but we've got to follow it through. So now we're going to replace the heat exchanger because that's what's at fault. What's happened is there's a pinhole between the mains pressure and then the heating system. And with the mains pressure being nearly three bar, that's pushing the heating system up to three bar, which obviously is dripping out the PRV. So on this occasion, I'm going to whip the pump out, I'm going to change the plate, and I'm going to change the flow adapter, and I'm going to change the PRV. I've got plenty of videos of me taking all this apart, so I'm not going to do it on this one. Just going to kind of skip through it, because it didn't quite go to plan. Remember to pull this little clip down for the PRV, otherwise it can be a nightmare. So where they piped up the back, they didn't take them straight to the wall, so I ended up having to take the whole manifold out anyway, left and right. So there's not much left inside the boiler. There's all the new parts about to go in. It's crazy to think all that came out of there. So I'm gonna put the left hand manifold in first. Then I'm gonna pop the right hand manifold back in. Then the pump goes back in. And here's a really good way to put inhibitor in the system. Put some blue roll down to protect the board. Open the air bleed at the top of the heat exchanger. You've still got flow and return isolated at this point. Going to open the inhibitor, pop a hole in the top. Then you're going to get a 150 mil syringe. Going to pop that in there. Going to suck the inhibitor up into the syringe. Then open the drain off. Insert the tube into the drain off and then push it against your body to put the inhibitor into the system. And you can repeat it until the whole inhibitor's in there. And then when you've finished one, just turn the drain off off and repeat. Then I also use a syringe to get some clean water. And then I test the condensed trap because I've replaced the fiber washer. So I'm just checking all the joints. Open the flow and return, fire the boiler up, check everything gets hot, check for leaks, carry out 26 nines, run the hot tap long enough to get all the air out so it doesn't shock the customer later. And that's another one done. Happy days.